This place, though, is starting to come to life. You'll see over my shoulder the stage is being set up. The Israeli flags have been brought out along with the flags of the Israeli Labor Party. Tal, as you know, this is a party with a long tradition and an esteemed heritage. Its predecessor party, found in, in 1930, ran the show in Jewish communities and during the British Mandate period and then ran Israeli government and politics and large segments of Israeli society for 30 years after the founding of the state. Again, this party has seen better times. It was almost wiped out in the polls a few months ago, but has come back to get about 10 seats, as projected in our own Israel Ayom I-24 News poll a few days ago and in other polls here. So again, the Labor Party may be hoping the center-left could come to power, but again, it won't be this party that's running the show. It will be the blue and white party of Benny Gantz, but this party will still be an important part of any potential center-left coalition. I can say now that it looks like the theme or, or the word that people are talking about now is desperation. Not only in the Likud party, but because that uh, the Likud party started this uh, Gewald campaign, uh, this uh, panic button that they've been pressing, the other parties on the right wings are also, are also feeling desperation that they also might be hurt. And they're coming out and asking their voters to come and vote in uh, larger numbers. And the same thing, by the way, is happening on the left with uh, Blue and White and uh, uh, with uh, Benny Gantz and the rival of Benjamin Netanyahu. Eli, thanks for joining us. Um, what do you make of this, what, what I just said, this desperation theme that seems to be taking over the last yeah. four hours that we have before the polls close? Well, the, since when are we letting facts or hardcore data disturb the narrative? And the narrative now throughout the political map is panicking. Panicking not because this is this might be the situation. It is the situation for some parties, but because it serves them in the sense that they are they want to, uh, uh, to trigger or stimulate voters to head out and vote for their own respective parties. We're seeing it on the left side of the political map with the Labour Party and the Blue and White Party, and we're seeing it on the right with the ruling Likud Party and those other smaller right-wing parties that are indeed uh, still uh, struggling, are still struggling uh, to uh, make it across and, the And I think the difference is between, between 2015 mm -hmm. is that this time, those small parties on the right, they're like, uh, we're not falling for it this time. Well, well, they're trying. They're uh, trying. To, they're trying uh, to uh, to counter uh, Netanyahu's uh, campaign. Uh, we've seen, uh, uh, you know, I'll take you even back to the coalition negotiations uh, and the aftermath of the 2015 elections. Netanyahu uh, uh, launched this Hail Mary campaign, the Gewalt campaign for Yiddish yeah. lovers uh, um, that are watching us. Um, and and after that, while negotiating the terms of the right wing coalition, Bennett, uh, Naftali Bennett, uh, currently leader of the New Right Party, uh, now. Uh, and, and, and previously was uh, the leader of the Jewish uh, Home Party, was really, really disturbed by the uh, amount of seats he lost for Netanyahu because of this campaign. And he somewhat played on that and got uh, this uh, prestigious post of the uh, the prestigious uh, portfolio of the Justice Ministry. Uh, of the people that are expected to vote for Fagan or have already voted for him are indeed uh, first-time voters, voters that have connected with the uh, very liberal point of view in regards to legalizing marijuana, and also uh, religious nationalists and Zionists within the West Bank, of course, uh, have uh, have also found a liking with Moshe Feiglin, but it's not exclusively uh, right-wing extremists necessarily. We are seeing a varied group of people that are voting for them. We're also seeing a varied a, a party list for Moshe Feiglin and the Zahud party. We're talking about a libertarian economist and, and many others who are putting together a very interesting list that might get a lot of voters. That's been the difference, I think, between Gantz and Lapid's strategy as opposed to everybody else. There are parties from across the political spectrum right now who are uh, calling collapse saying we're, we're gonna uh, our party's gonna be wiped out if our supporters don't get to the polls it's a scare tactic coming from many parties across the political spectrum right now right and left Gantz and Lapid are basically saying we're winning we're winning but it's not enough we need to win by more we need to get that mandate from Brian, uh, from President Reuven Rivlin to uh, get the first crack at forming the next government and saying we're that close I think Yair Lapid said we're a couple of yards away a couple of meters away Way, but we need to get over that finish line. So that's been the difference in the strategy between Blue and White, the Gantz and Lapid, and everybody else today. Everybody else saying we're on the verge of collapse. Gantz and Lapid said we're winning, but we need a few more votes to make sure we get that first mandate. We are hearing that voter turnout is a little bit down, but not by that much. It's 42.8% right now, which is only about 2.5% lower than it was in the last set of elections, which means that everything is within the statistical insignificance range, meaning that we are looking at the elections right now more or less the same way as we saw them last year. Now, I want to give you a little bit of a hint of the sheer chaos going on in here right now. If you look over here, we have the election committee uh, meeting right behind me. 
Right over there at that desk, you can see dozens of people at computers. What you'll notice represents another district as the votes are coming in. They're monitoring to make sure that everything is going smoothly, to make sure there are no incidents at the polling places. And there have been a few already today, and they're keeping track of all the information as it gets in. Now, one of those incidents I mentioned before was earlier this morning, there was a statement from some of the Arab sector that Likud activists had put cameras inside their polling polling places as a way to drive down voter turnout through intimidation tactics. Now, the Likudniks were saying that this was a way of trying to keep everybody honest, but the election committee, after monitoring this, came out and made an official statement banning people from putting cameras in the polling places. 